All right, what I want you guys to do is to apply the principles of vicarious liability for employees that we were just talking about. So remember, that means that the, we're looking at whether the person was acting in the scope of their duties, whether they were an employee, and whether they were faulty. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is actually based on a real case. This is AXA Assurance contre Garda. So this is relating to a building that used to be on de Maison. It's since been torn down and replaced, uh, in part because it suffered substantial damage. And uh, the building was this big, ugly building on de Maison. Uh, there was a security guard who was employed by Garda Security. Who were, there was a contract between the YMCA and Garda Security, and Garda Security had this security guard. So YMCA hired them to have this guy watch over the building at night or generally to have Garda watch over the entire building at night. And this security guard named Ferezi uh, had a bit of a, an issue with uh, he liked to set things on fire. So uh, I don't know, maybe he had the right job, maybe the wrong job for that kind of affliction. And he set small fires over the course of a couple of weeks in the building, none of which caused huge problems. But people were aware that there were these fires going on. And eventually, one of these became a very big fire. Now, initially when it happened, uh, he, I think he was made a, a big hero because he called the, the fire department in to sort it out. Eventually, the security cameras showed that he was the one who had been setting them. Uh, this particular big fire caused $2.4 million in damages to the YMCA building. Uh, now, what I want you to do is to argue one way or the other. Uh, I'm less looking for a right or wrong answer here. I'm more looking for how forcefully you can argue using the principles laid out in the previous videos about whether or not Garda security should be held responsible for the actions of Mr. Ferreze. Uh, do you feel that it's fair under the circumstances applying the principles of vicarious liability for employees that the Garda security should be held responsible and pay for the fire set by Mr. Ferreze, their employee? So I'm looking for a hundred words from me, a few sentences outlining forcefully either saying yes the guard of security should be forced to pay for this or no uh, guard of security should not be forced to pay for this and here's why and remember that's about a hundred words taking one side and arguing using the principles of vicarious liability why your side is right